welcome back to DIY guitar making. So we're gonna start a new series here, which is basically gonna be a daily vlog series on guitar number 106. But first, uh, there's a bit of explaining that I have to do, uh, particularly about the, if you guys have been following along, the parlor guitars, because time is getting tight, uh, we're almost at the point where I have to really start getting ready for the spring guitar building workshops. What I have to do, just because certain guitars have different dates when I need them to be done, uh, I'm gonna be putting these parlor guitars on hold and later on in the summer, you'll actually see them reemerge in my videos and I will actually get to finish these super cool guitars, which I've really enjoyed working on. So I'm a, a little bit, I don't want to say bummed out because I love the, the OM I'm getting started on right now is, has its own interesting and unique aspects to it that are motivating for me. But this was just very different and I'm, you know, I got pretty far along here and to not see it uh, completed at least anytime soon is, um, you know, going to wear on me a little bit. So this is where we're at. We actually really were making progress on this guy. So that's number 86. Um, this is the other part of the guitar, number 87, obviously not as far along. So both of these right now are going to go on the shelf. All right, so what are we moving on to then? So guitar number 106 is an orchestra model guitar. We're gonna be using Nicaraguan Rosewood and Sitka Spruce for the top. What this series is gonna be, it's gonna be a daily vlog where I'm going to do all the work throughout the day. Uh, basically, I'm gonna see how much I can get done in a given day, and then the next morning, I'm gonna recap what I did for that day, okay? So that's why I say it's gonna be more like a vlog. I'm gonna show you the results and talk about what I did and teach you techniques and tips and tricks and stuff like that all along as I do it. All right, so let me put these guys on the shelf and let's take a look at what I did for day one of guitar number 106. So guitar 106, I'm building for David in California. This is a commission build. This is the back set that we decided upon. We were looking at uh, a bunch of different samples. I went to Hearn Hardwoods, as I usually do, and picked through the stacks, sent him a bunch of text messages with different options. And this was the one that we landed on. One thing that I really wanted to do with this one is I really, or we, because me and David were uh, talking throughout this, we wanted to maintain this sapwood stripe here. And so when I joined this yesterday, uh, one of my, uh, not quite concerns, but things that I was watching and, and just very aware of, was that I didn't want this, during the jointing process where you're planing and sanding this joint and candle lighting it to get it to be a super tight joint, it's very easy to lose a lot of material in the process. And in this case, I really didn't want this narrow bridge of pale sapwood here to close up and disappear because you would really lose the effect, I think. And instead of having this long center stripe, which looks cool, you would have like this finger coming up like this that disappears and then another one that comes down from the top and disappears. And I, I just think it would have killed the effect. So. I'm just mentioning that because that's always something I'm aware of when I'm selecting materials. Very often when you see sapwood on a back set, there's not enough of it to actually maintain the visual effect that you're going for. Very often the sapwood will disappear through the process of processing that back. Okay. So it's just something to be aware of. It can be disappointing to a new builder when you buy a set and you're trying, you buy it literally for the, the sapwood stripe and you end up losing all or most of it in the process. Yeah, so yesterday we'll talk about the back first since we're already here. Nicaraguan rosewood, like I said. Yesterday I used a number five jack plane and I always use my leveling beam 
as a part of my jointing process on the shooting board. Here, we'll go over here and check it out. This is a very critical part of my jointing process. With just the number five jack plane alone, I can't get a an absolutely perfect joint. I know maybe some people can with just the plane, but I always use this with some 220 grit sandpaper at the end after planing to get that just perfect, completely seamless joint on my light box here, okay? In addition to joining the back plate, I also bent the set of sides. So here are my side bending carousels, or th this is my side bending carousel, that's what I call it, um, which is really just a workbench with four different side bending machines so that I can bend uh, enough sides for two guitars at once. Uh, I only did one guitar in this case, so these two machines were used and in this case, I thicknessed the Nicaraguan rosewood to 85 thousandths of an inch. Probably could have done 90 thousandths of an inch. I'm sure it would have been fine. But since this was a very unique set, it made the sides irreplaceable, right? So in cases like that, where I, don't, I can't easily get a new set of sides to replace it aesthetically, I like to err on the side of caution and just make it a little bit thinner before loading it up um, to avoid compression marks and cracks and things like that. Probably would have been fine at 90 thousandths of an inch. That's what I usually do though. Okay, so I'll go ahead and pop these out so we can take a look at them. Okay, so I've got it wrapped here in aluminum foil, and inside the aluminum foil is parchment paper. I always wrap my sides, regardless of the species, I wrap them in aluminum foil and parchment paper. All right, success. So that is our gorgeous, it really is a just a gorgeous piece of wood, this Nicaraguan rosewood, especially once I clean it up and, you know, get rid of some of the uh, marks from the bending process. Cool. By the way, the first thing that I like to do when I remove a set of sides from the side bending machines is get this loaded up and held tight into my exterior mold. Um, and that's just so that this doesn't experience a whole lot of spring back, right? So if, you, if I just leave this on the table, uh, at least to some extent over time, maybe over the next two days, this would spring back just a little bit. Um, probably not to the point where it would be unusable, but it would make things a little bit more difficult. We don't want that. All right, let's take a look. This was my favorite part of yesterday. Making this custom rosette for David. So you'll notice right away that w one thing I wanted to do with this was I wanted to, and actually I didn't uh, talk to David about this at all, but I wanted to use the stripe that we have here and somehow pull it. And you can actually see that lines up really well with it right there. That looks cool. And pull that stripe onto the rosette, right? So I'm taking an element from elsewhere on the guitar 
and using it here. Now, I actually constructed this rosette using the radial rosette maker, which we'll talk about in a moment. And I constructed it in such a way as to have a backup plan. So the rosette will always be covered by the fretboard tongue at the top portion. And um, I'm not really sure in the end when I cut the channel and press this in there, I'm not really sure if I'm gonna like having this little element down here at the bottom, the sapwood. So my rip cord here, so to speak, my plan B is to just put that down there if I want more of a, just a simple look. And that does look really good just like that. It still is pulling something from a different part of the, the guitar because this wood actually came directly from this back plate. The individual wedges that compose this radial rosette came from right off the bottom of the plate right here, and some of them came from the top as well. So that's how I got that, okay? Now I always make these radial rosettes using the radial rosette maker jig. By the way, this is a jig that I designed myself and I sell and produce here in the shop. So if you guys are interested in one of these jigs, check it out at ericshaferguitars.com. I have uh, several of them uh, already made right now and, and ready to be shipped. So uh, ericshaferguitars.com. The way this works, uh, in a nutshell, essentially, is that there is a wedge template that goes right here, and you can cut you cut the individual wedges from a strip of wood. And again, in this case, this strip of wood was rescued from the back plate. And so that gives you your individual tapered wedges, which you assemble under this circle clamp. And then you can cut out your rosette using a Dremel with a circle cutting jig attached to the center pin right here. There's even an alternate pin location if you want to do offset rosettes. So it's really like an all-in-one rosette design system. It makes the process fast, easy, repeatable, and fun. So that's where I'm at for day one of Guitar 106. You guys can follow me along with this whole build. I'm going to do one of these vlogs like this every single day of this build, and I'll occasionally try and fit in my, my regular Q&As that I normally do as well, okay? So you guys don't aren't going to miss out on that content. All right, so let me get started with today, and you guys will see the results tomorrow when I make the next daily vlog. If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericshaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.